Plus, I'm um, Demi and I'm here with New Game Plus executive producer Jason O'Callaghan. Are you enjoying Comedy Christmas today? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it's yeah, it's Comedy Christmas <laughs> if the elves basically threatened to, you know, took took Santa and his family down to the basement <laughs> of the deer. Was it the deer that they shot him in? I don't know, but the Russians definitely shot him at the basement. Um, yeah, uh, like, so it is Labor Day, uh, which is May. Uh, yeah, which is kind of Elvis and May Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. see the movie Fat Man with? Mel Gibson, yeah. not not acting. It's it's like when Mel Gibson in Fat Man is like when um, uh, who's his name Adam Baldwin turned yeah. up and, and acted on Chuck. Yeah, he, he just he just turned up. They were afraid to send him home. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's a funny movie. Again, I, I struggle I struggle with Mel Gibson because it's one of those things of like he is just such a mental cretin of scum. Actually, you know, but the man knows story structure, so I still watch his movies and it hurts me. Oh, so. Boss Level as well. Have you seen Boss no, Level? No, I haven't, but I've been meaning to. It, it's actually really good. Uh, I thought it'd be just dumb. Other oh, Boss Level, it's it's another take on uh, Edge of Tomorrow, or if you're American, Live Die Repeat. Because it's got to be obvious. That's what I was saying before. Welcome to the jungle. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's another. Take take on that repeating day thing but it's actually really fun yeah. it's, and Mel Gibson's in that as the bad guy yeah. and he's really good at bad guys he's really good at playing uh, crazy, uh, crazy unhinged Whoa. people <laughs> what a what a what a shock what a surprise. he's just so good at it <laughs> it's uh, almost like he doesn't have to prepare <laughs> uh, was it beyond <laughs> what do you look for beyond Thunderdome beyond Los Angeles, I think it's called. What's that what movie the hell? That Beyond Los Angeles. No, um, are you googling stuff on yeah, your podcast? No, but the guy, <laughs> so the guy from that guy, that that one, um, uh, oh, Beyond. <coughs> I can't remember what it's called. God damn it! It's on Netflix, and it's got the guys from guys from Raid Beyond movie. Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, yeah, so the that? Beyond. The Beyond. Uh, uh, no. Um, if you Google guys from something, you, yeah, you, you know, just scroll for a while, you'll get some interesting stuff. So let's go. To, I'll, I'll do it the old fact. I'll go backwards. Are we, is this a live podcast of a Google? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It's fine. It's <laughs> this, fine. This is cross technology people, now. This people is... are used to this. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, really? Um, uh, Raid 2, and it'll take Shadow me to the Shadow Legends. See? So BBC Radio. You. Uh, BBC Radio. The Raid. The Ray. Uh, where is he? This is uh, this is uh, amazing. Cast. Sure, viewing. I'm sure. sure. sure, sure. <laughs> he's always. So we're getting there. He's, he wasn't in it. Who are you talking uh, about? No, but he's in this movie. You Beyond think- Skyline. Beyond Skyline. So Beyond Skyline is like it's a second one of this thing. So the fr- main guy from it, Frank Grillo. So that's the guy from. Oh, you know, if they ever yeah. make a Just Cause movie, he should be Rico. So. I mean, he should have been the Punisher, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, uh, yeah, that is. That doesn't matter. Moral story. Is, so basically, comics. basically. Uh, it starts, it starts in uh, in LA and it's the alien invasion and he gets picked up and his son gets picked up and a bunch of people get picked up, right? And as they're flying over the Earth, uh, they manage to crash the alien spaceship and they crash it in fucking, I think it's Thailand or um, Cambodia. And the guys from the raid are the guys, the village that it lands in. So they're running like a terrorist insurgency in uh, whichever, I think, I'm pretty sure it's like Cambodia or something. And they, they crash it and um, so it's those guys fist fighting aliens using like raid like martial arts and like with machetes and stuff and like and then Frank Grillo from America it's it was it was two hours and it was so fucking dumb but it was great it was brilliant I would dumb watch it fun? yeah for sure it was really good so, See, yeah. sometimes, sometimes dumb but fun can work it is International Women's Day as well. We did forget that. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Sorry, oh, well, you got sidetracked for me. Yeah, you uh, about I, I did, Christmas. I did, I did. Uh, yeah. Because uh, coming Christmas, so um, May Day is in May, and if you go to if you're in Western Australia, it's, or, it's, Labor, say, it's Labor Day today. West, so yeah, West Australia, yeah, yeah, West Australia or Queensland. It, I think Labor Day is on the actual normal day. It's in May Day, but uh, in in Victoria and New South Wales, it's thing now. And it's International Women's Day as well, or as Christian Porter would call it, International Ladies Don't Day. Do it or... <laughs> That's fuzzy. That is that's to <laughs> okay. get us into trouble again. Yeah, I, does it, that doesn't count as politics. I'm saying. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I must say though, raping's not very Christian. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Now, what have you been playing? Let's let's try and do a podcast. Ah, uh, so Googling. Uh, I've been playing Monster Hunter, trying to finish uh, Monster Hunter World again. Still this. inspired by the awesome movie. Uh, anyway, um, Monster Hunter Rise comes out uh, in two weeks, three weeks. So I'm like looking forward to that, um, and then uh, I got Denshi there. Go, Did, oh, it's too far away. As I say, just grab it and show people. Go on, <coughs> Liam. <laughs> okay, go on. Do it. You can go oh. offset, yeah. Uh, While my assistant go, yeah, make it, make yes. the old man stand your up. Beautiful assistant. Listen, ah, as he there stands up. Oh yeah, because I'm old. Here we go. Uh, am I back? Yeah, you are. Uh, cool. There we go. I can't see. 
There we go. This is uh, this is for people who like to drive trains, pretend they're train drivers. Yeah. Do you want to do this? And look, there's a bit here, like if you're playing, like that's the accelerator in it. Yeah. So that's that that's that's, that's your gears, that's your gears, and that's your re- re- brake and reverse brake. So that's full open, and that slowly ticks back. Each step is one stick back, and then that's emergency brake. So you slam that if you need the emergency brake. Yeah, that's that's good. That's up and down. Yeah. No, I've I've played these things before. That's I played this like really dangerous style. That's yeah. that's the accelerating. And this yeah, so that, that, so that 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 sets up the. How do trains are dumb. How do yeah, trains work? It's the same. It's the same. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what what Jason's want to talk about is this thing has a HDMI output. Yeah. And it has uh, is it the, the it's that's just three point five. You can run off the power brick. Yeah. And it's basically a built-in train game. So like those things you see in Kmart that play Galaga or uh, or Pac Man and, yeah. and those things. But this one it has a built-in train game where you can pretend to be a train driver. It's, if, it's if the full version for anyone who knows it. It's the full version of Denshi Deco Final, which was the last one on PS. Two, I want to say, and it has Tokyo maps, Osaka maps, and it has uh, Takedo, not Shinkansen, but Takedo rail line. Maps. So, <laughs> you said Shinkansen. You said Shinkansen. You Shinkansen. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, guys. Jason's been. Jason's basically been driving trains, yeah. like some sort of a weird. The camera keeps you're dropping. In, I apologize. I don't know why. You're on the nerd. Yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway. cool, mate. Anyway. Hey, you've been playing that. You know. You know what? I played. Um, I played with the kids and, and wife. You know, remember that game Nintendo Land on Wii U yeah. where you have the ghost yeah. and one person plays as the control yeah. thing as the ghost and they have to run away and up to four other people can play as the uh, people with the to- Luigi's with the torches. And yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, you know what? That's worth keeping the Wii U for. That to me was what the promise of the Wii U was and then it never became that. That asymmetrical gameplay was what it had the potential to be and it just never became that because it, it came out with an underdeveloped CPU it went battle stations and all the development that was going into the Wii U went to the 3DS because they knew the 3DS was more important to their long-term success. So all the devs got pulled. Mm. Um, but yes, that's the kind of stuff that I used to love the Wii U for. Like, you want to talk about Wii I mean, that's one thing, you know, Jared will carry on about for ages is how good the Wii U is and no one ever talks about it. The Wii U is great. Yeah. I love the Wii U. It, 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 to me, the Switch is kind of delivering on the... games pro- like Zelda. That Zelda Breath of the Wild's on it. It's got Mario Breath of the 3D Wild. World. Yeah, it's on the Wii U. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, no, you're right. It yeah, was, it was, like, it. It was yeah. like it was like Twilight oh. Princess, where it was like the last the, the Twilight Princess was on it's, uh, GameCube as well. It's got a whole lot of yeah. games on the Switch on the Wii. <laughs> Funny story, you know, um, so Twilight but, Princess on the GameCube uh, has he holds GameCube. the shield in a different hand than he does when you play it on uh, Wii. So if you have Twilight Princess, yeah, because most people twi- waggle game? waggle with the right hand, and normally that, that's his shield hand. And you, Is left. that the Kadoo one? Twilight Princess. No, I've got to go to Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm not a big Zelda player. I got. I bought Zelda Skyward I put, I put Sword. That was light. garbage that when it turned me off. Which so, one was that? Zelda Skyward Sword. I hated that so much. Yeah, and that's the one that's being re-released very soon. Yeah, I saw it being re-released. It was dumb. I couldn't stand it. But anyway, um, uh, Twilight Princess is the one with the wolf. Mince. It's the one with the wolf. I don't know, the one with the... Yeah, so that was the first one on Wii U, but it was also on GameCube. The one where Zelda sure. wears yeah. green and isn't afraid of me. That's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Um, Although, okay, right. cool. All right, now, so, so I've been playing that Luigi. I play that Luigi uh, Mansion sort of game mm. where one person on the, is on the Wii U. Yeah, game and they're the ghosts ghost. and they have to sneak up on the others. Fantastic. Yeah. And, yep. you know, it's a pity that that's a game that probably can't be done again. Yeah. Really hard to yep. you, you do. You get a mobile, you, you need force, And you need four switches to do it on that one. You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's it not really viable. Yeah. Brilliant. It really, uh, I'm, I'm glad I kept my Wii U just for that. It was fun. Kids love the two. All right, cool. Now, uh, let's go to some uh, news. And this is topical since it's Commie Christmas Day. Do you give each other Christmas presents on Commie Christmas Day? Or, do, or do they so, just come from the government? everyone's presents, technically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technically, but you just take presents. what you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, so, so what do you go for? <laughs> Ray Hadley on us, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I saw Steve Price on the project before I headed over. Um, yeah. Uh, so let, Steve oh, Price's latest brainwave is having Peter Credlin run for the Victorian Premiership. Yeah. Anyway, we weren't going to do that because yeah. Andrew, Andrew said don't. Uh, and we, we have something that will trigger Jason coming up, so I'll, I'll save it. Save um, it. All right. Uh, Twitch pulled... Uh, Am- Amazon had... Um, sorry, Twitch was running ads, anti-unionising ads on, on its streams uh, for Amazon warehouses because uh, Amazon workers in America are having a big discussion about unionising. Yeah. See, topical for yeah. Comedy Christmas Day. Um, and uh, Twitch was running ads basically saying, it was funny, actually, it was targeted workers in Alabama plan who are, yes. who are currently voting, but all of them are going to be at some point. Uh, their little thing was do it without Jews, uh, which is that 
don't pay union dues they, which is funny because if they paid them more they wouldn't care how much they pay yeah, union yeah, dues yeah. they don't pay them much um, and it was very similar that, remember I can't remember the company that ran it and said your union dues cost as much as a Playstation it was, Delta, by, it was Delta Airlines yeah buy Playstation instead of paying, paying your interest yes, in, yes wait, yeah, your, your, your $600 could buy a Playstation instead of paying for your union fee yeah well they were doing a similar thing do it with yeah. their dues like, and they were saying we don't want people coming in and telling us how to work sort of thing as if you know, yeah. So, um, but anyway, um, so I think Am- that doesn't benefit anyone but Bezos. But yeah, yeah a- Amazon was uh, running running anti union ads on Twitch, and Twitch pulled them because all the stream, oh, a lot of streamers went. That's bullshit. We can't have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Which is an interesting one because YouTube probably wouldn't give into that. So, uh, Diablo, oh, Blizzard, yeah. Diablo Two now is the news for you. If you remember, you remember when uh, we talked about it last podcast about how. Um, uh, when they announced Diablo 4 and Overwatch mm. 2 and we thought that was maybe a distraction well, you have the phone don't you yeah mate. and, and the phone, remember that guy stood up and said is this a joke and I, I agree with him by the way but a lot of people were very angry with him uh, anyway uh, now we, we find ourselves now with Diablo 2 being re-released and we talked about that already yeah. but apparently the original Diablo 2 save games if you have them on a mm. PC will work mm. with Diablo 2 Resurrected Okay. Which means they've just recompiled it. <laughs> they've added some textures. Yeah, that and is what that means, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, so out of all this stuff about Diablo Four and, and Overwatch Two uh, announcements, which were clearly and we we called it at the time. Yeah. We we said these are distractions. They, they, they're scumming it. They're just yeah, making distractions yeah, yeah. together to change the media narrative. Um, and that thing that happened with the with the uh, what they called BlizzCon or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all they've come up with with these Diablo Two and Diablo Two re- can load your old Diablo Two save files. So yeah, it basically yeah. just means they've just What's skinned it, it up basically. Yeah, skinned it or up up res the the things, and that's kind of it. So so yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, let's go now. Uh, how long have we gone? Oh, we're not about fifteen minutes. Right, about 15 cool. minutes. Nah, we promised Andrew we wouldn't, so let's not talk politics. Uh, talking Blizzard, Activision Blizzard have hired former Bush counter-terrorism advisor, I can't remember his name, for their, as their corporate affairs uh, person. So Activision... <laughs> you'd love this one, I threw this in. So, so basically Activision Blizzard have hired the former Bush counter-terrorism advisor. And the, and next, and the, the, the next Blizzard uh, expansion pack, actually, what happens, right? Uh, <laughs> it turns out that uh, Sylvanas, uh, Sylvanas Hussain is her full name, um, <laughs> she actually has weapons of mass destruction, and so then all the good people of, uh, of Azeroth and all the paladins have to go over to, to where she is and, and save the world. Uh, that, that's how it's going to work, to the Shadowlands. And, and that's how it's going to be, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, well, and the Overwatch, you know, when you're in the lobby areas of Overwatch? Yeah. Basically, if you're... Uh, if you're in the Egypt map, you can just look at your window and see, yeah. Yeah, and if you're a non-white character, they, yeah, just, yeah. they just hold you up at the entry and search you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Violate you with a search. Um, now, pe- people forget how bad, how bad Bush was. We weren't going to get political. But I did want to compare it to something. I want to compare it to... Because this, this just had a, a little bit of news... No backlash, no nothing. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. both of us, we're big fans of George W. Bush. Mm, we big and, fans, and huge you fans. know, right back to when Bush's dad was yeah. Reagan's voice. You're a big fan of that, and yeah, also head, right head back to Prescott. The, Prescott head, head, head is an artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a lot of um, a lot of uh, especially in that early era of like the um, the 30s and stuff was the the religious Christian right was a big push against the Green New Deal and stuff like that. Yep. So yeah. So we're big fans of that. But I want to compare this because this news and the reason I brought it up, mm. I did I did it kind of to wind you up, especially on on Commie Christmas Day, is is compare that to the backlash we've seen, like, um, say the Harry Potter dip. Mm. Now now I'm not going to say the Harry Potter dip. I'm not, I'm not going to give an opinion either way. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, uh, I have one, but I'm not going to give it here. But yeah. I would say. When you're hiring um, counter-terrorism experts for your company yeah. and it gets no criticism, no commentary, whereas you've got a dev, elite dev, who's admittedly more obvious, yeah. who, who, has, who has done... The lead dev had done and said things in the past yeah. that people found objectionable, whereas you've got a counter-terrorism expert for government who, who actually did... You know, uh, torture brown people. I would did put in a no fly list that was absolutely racist, yeah. and 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 helped start wars and surveillance. What he did, I would say, I know yeah, this is, is a categorically thing. worse. It yeah. Absolutely worse. But no backlash. No. So two two things I'll say. Yep. Number one, intended audience. Cod, cod kids don't care. 
They, they've just had a game venerating Reagan. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they don't but, care. But it's still something that the people who care... Uh, okay, this is going to sound bad. People who care should still care about this. The, and that's the flip side of it, is in a world where we have cynical woke journalism like Pedestrian and Junkie. I was walking through Chatty the other Channel day. Channel 9 own. Uh, yeah, Channel 9 own Pedestrian. Yep. Um, uh, and that's the kind of woke left media that we have. And they're still chasing clicks. And they know that listing that won't get them as many clicks oh, as... By the way, I don't believe they're left, by the way. I no, don't, I don't go on record. They are not left. They are, they are like... Okay. They're liberal. It's a different thing. You you hear... Well, you try, I have I funny explain to American friends on Facebook yeah. that our Liberal Party... They go, oh, it's a Liberal Party. They're Liberal. They're, no, it's nah, a different... It's, a, it's, it's, it's the classical Liberal. <laughs> it's a yeah. very different thing. Um, but no, look, look we, we do have this... this uh, and look, I don't necessar- necessarily think it's a bad thing for the gaming community, I'm not a big fan of community, but to keep, to try and keep companies honest. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that's about. The companies don't always have to act. And they can sometimes should should and they turn definitely and won't. say, yeah, yeah. "Fuck off!" Like you're yeah. all being a bit. Good. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that that these things come into the public conversation. Yeah. But you've got a guy who is object. You cannot deny the yeah. evil that was done. With can it? Head of counterterrorism under Bush is just an evil position compared to, okay, now somebody has said and done some things that are objectionable. We did get up, everyone got upset about one, but the other just flew under the radar. Yeah, and, and but I, again, I, I think it, it's the two pronged of uh, modern journalism requires clicks and that doesn't bring clicks because it's expected. You cannot, so one of the things you cannot do, this is one of the things from the Twitch OS update that, that came up, the terms of service, is you cannot. Use someone's veteran status. You cannot attack someone's veteran status uh, as a way to think. So, you, so you can't turn around. You can't. You couldn't have a, a, a Vietnam demonstration again. You couldn't have baby killers coming home, right? Because you're attacking their veteran status, right? Because they're a veteran and because they they went off to to, to go shoot Iraqis for for um, the bushes and Halliburton. But you can't attack that. You can't use that as a as a mechanism thing. Now, I understand the intention is to say that. Veterans should always be considered for healthcare bills and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. it has a wider ranging effect. That um, it's one of the things that got got updated when they did the terms of service. So you can't obviously use you know, gender or race or anything like that. But right, see, the funny thing with that is two prong. One, you can't use veteran status, and two. So one of the the classic emotes on Twitch for Americans. So every time someone's talking about like fatty food or invading someone with guns or whatever, everyone spams. Oil. Ca- everyone, yeah. everyone spams Kakona, right? Kakona is symbolic of the US. If you put Kakona, you mean the US. I don't just, know what is. Uh, it's like a, just a picture of a dude in a hat. Doesn't matter, okay, right? Yeah, but people enough. know that Kakona means American. Just like Anil, as horrible as he is, a guy with like it looks like he's wearing a turban, people use that for Middle East and India, right? Ming Li is for China. It, it's this like race based like, game that they use, yeah. right? So yeah. so China you can say, okay, well that's race based. Um, you know, Anil, the brown skinned dude wearing the turban, okay, well that's Middle East and subcontinent, right? But then for them to say you can't have the white dude in the cap be the American is weird because America prides itself on its multiculturalism. So yeah, 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 that's yeah. that's the opposite of the normal conversation. Yeah. Is you know when they took out the uh, the black guy from the oats or something? Yeah, you know, they, they they're, they're trying to do that, but then in this case they're protecting my, the, the, my favorite. Yeah, like the, the the best one that was Land of the Lakes. Have you seen Land of the Lakes butter? And it used to have like the the, the Native American chick in the center of the thing. And then they redid the logo, and they kept the land, but they got rid of the Indian. And it's like that was the joke about America. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like, ah, oh, the more things change, the more they say the same. They yeah, kept the they history, kept the they kept the repeats. land, but they got rid of the Native Americans. History so like, repeats yeah. Yeah. all the time. So like, so yeah, so that that's that thing. Because I mean, the argument could be then for because there's also a, 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 a offshoot emote called Kakraki, which is the same guy, but he's wearing a, a swagman's hat with the corks, right? Yeah. But then if people use that to denote, let's say there's any Australian content comes up, um, people use that, that doesn't attract the same reading to reading the span. Like I've had mods like wipe my chat channel when I'm chatting to people in, in thing yeah. because I've used Kakona. So I get timed out for five minutes. And I'm like, I didn't even know that was a thing. But they're so strict on the terms of service that that broad use of American could think. So that's, th- th- again, that goes, I hate to sound like Gerard, and this is killing me to do it, is that censorship is not... It's not working the way they intended. It's not it to, consistent. They, so, they actually, you know what? They, I would yeah. argue it is working the way they intended. To. The way they intended it to, but yes. not the way the people pushing for it intended. Yeah. Oh well, that's because yeah. that's because, um, and you know my view on this. A lot of the things calling itself left is yeah. using our best intentions against us. Yeah. Um, Cynical left. I, I've I've come to refer to it yeah, as everyone. Um, what, what what do people call it? The 
the pretend left and all that. The woke uh, I, left. I call stuff. it a fake left. Yeah. Uh, because look, there's a genuine left. But uh, again, this is a commie Christmas day, and yeah. it is it's topical. Uh, I don't. I don't believe a lot of people call themselves left. Uh, genuinely left. Yeah. I think they are. They're they're being sort of uh, tricked. Well, I see into... a lot of people have that American exceptionalism. That, that's what that's why the Liberal Party was separate in Australia is because they believed in that exceptional nature. I mean, ignoring of course the fact that most of the people who believed in it start with rich landowners in a country like Australia where they all the different things that they did. So from the start, we're not off to a good start. But that was always the idea was that you know <clears throat> you owned it. You there was that kind of exceptional nature to it. And then obviously the Labor movement was more about collective working together and it's funny that the Labour gets called communist when the reason for the Labour Party existing is to cut off any like approach from the the communist parties of I think many people who use political terms don't know what they uh, mean correct communist so, is one of them but you'll find that even in America a lot of liberals believe in that prosperity narrative they believe in well if you work hard you, like a lot of the people who have that don't genuinely yeah Jeff Bezos just works like several thousand times harder yeah, than I for sure day. absolutely and that's why he deserves that money yeah. Yeah. As, as opposed uh, to being there first obvious. as opposed to union busting as opposed to oh, using being, the power being the, to, being the son of a Wall Street yeah, banker yeah. having millions of I mean, dollars Elon, Elon Musk's parents have, yeah they, that yeah. had an emerald mine, but he, yeah. he pulled himself up by there his are, There are no, yeah. there are absolutely no, and I hate to ruin this idea for anybody. There are zero garage to riches stories that are genuine. They are everybody who started out working in a garage who became a billionaire was already rich. Yeah, and yeah. it's just a sad fact. Anyway, look. Um. So uh, now, uh, so that's what I want to bring up. <clears throat> the um, you've got this guy who is from an objectively evil um government and who did evil things. Flew under the radar. We, we if we're gonna if we're gonna want if we're gonna demand standards of yeah. the of video game industry, we need to demand standards consistently. Yeah. And and not just go for the, the easy targets or yeah. the obvious targets. This one was public knowledge. People did know about this, yeah. but they just didn't care. And that's yeah, that's yeah. a real pity to me. Another thing about uh, the Harry Potter game. Now that that by the way, that lead dev has quit. Yeah, I, have, um, I did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Harry Potter game actually has a trans character in it who you can play as. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. Now, now I, I would, I'd say I think there's I think there's more going on here from from because the lead dev would have been heavily involved in that. They, there's not like yeah, they, yeah. they not like they added a trans character a few days after the lead dev. Yeah, quit, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't work like that. So the lead dev was involved in that. I think there's I think um, people who are, people who have been angry about this are probably. Sometimes it's worth sitting back and waiting for a little while. Yeah, yeah. And just seeing, seeing how what the, happens. Yeah, seeing yeah. what happens. Now the other thing is, uh, Rowling gets a lot of criticism for being a turf, um, yeah. for, for not liking trans. Now uh, there's going to be a trans character in her game. Now that's probably but happened yeah, with her knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Well, it may be single marketing, but it may not. It, it's one of those ones. If they put it in there as a story element to do something, yeah. I would be very interested to see where they go. Yeah. Be yeah. A good or, or, or just or just exist. I, I, I think that's the point we need to get to is where it just exists and we're nowhere near that yet so yeah it's well actually it, it, you've, you've said this many times uh, when it exists and it's not a big deal is when, yeah, it's, when, just, it, when oh, yeah. it, it's won Taken the, battles, thing, yeah, the yeah. battle's won yeah, for sure. um, but anyway that's uh, interesting to see what they do with the Harry Potter game there that was just something that tacked onto that uh, and the lead dev who's quit would have been involved in that so maybe there's a little bit more going on with that um, JK Rowling being a turf the yeah. lead dev being a Andy S. maybe there's a bit more going on maybe they were trying to say something maybe they had Something that uh, a story arc that was going to yeah. be maybe it was going to be crap, maybe it was going to be a bad story arc. I mean, it's, but we it's might Harry Potter, it's always going to be bad. I don't well, Harry that's... Potter has this is another thing, a bit like the Bush guy versus the lead dev of Harry Potter. Um, Harry Potter was always about class structures, yeah. it was always about the private school system, which produces people like a current rapey politicians. It was yeah. always about the, the to me, that was the what it was meant to be. It was, yeah, it was meant to be a class warfare conversation. She wrote it when she was poor too. Yeah. Keep in mind, she's a billionaire now, but she won when she wrote it. So. To, to me, it's always, it's about the worst of, of humanity, effectively, that sort of story. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I, I have a big, uh, uh, like almost an allergic reaction to those sorts yeah, of things. Yeah. Um, but so the, so the reasons to criticise Harry Potter um, uh, more than what people are. <laughs> people have overlooked all the stuff that's actually wrong with it. Now, another story. Uh, <coughs> Forever Entertainment, uh, who are um, who are the Polish publishers, aren't yeah. they? Um, they, they? They apparently have picked up uh, work uh, redeveloping or publishing uh, Hollywood remakes for Square Enix. Uh, the only, I think they, they did Panzer Dragoon. 
on the Switch. Yes, they did, yeah, yeah. Remake, which is pretty good. And that, was on, that was on special the other day as well. If you're yeah, no, but if you haven't played Panzer Dragoon, look, nowadays it's a little bit dated where you go corner, corner, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, the, the four ways you look. Um, still worth looking at for a game that is significant pretty much in, in game history. Yeah, right? yeah. I'd say Panzer Dragoon game is famous for a reason. Um, but yeah, so they picked up to do a bunch more. I don't know what they are. Um, but uh, also, is there a lot of video game development going on in Poland? Do they got like are they like Canada with all their government? Yeah, there, it's a little bit that. I mean, they, they've got a lot of, of city project talented, red, talented people, good old games. Um, yeah, their I mean, city project yeah, red. Yeah, they are city project yeah. red. Um, yeah, they've got a lot of talented people in a country that, like, as much as it's an okay paying job, uh, wages aren't that high to begin with. Cost of living's low. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, but they still um, must have yeah. skills. I mean, they, yeah, 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 they produce yeah, Witcher. I mean. Witcher is actually I and mean, so Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven on on a machine wheel works. Witcher, actually, that's because that comes off Game Pass this week. So, but but that's but for when it, <coughs> on hardware where Cyberpunk works, it's mm. pretty good, isn't it? So yeah. so they've got the skill. So so yeah. No, I, 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 I feel like the, the thing with Cyberpunk is it's a little bit Molyneux. It's a Molyneux situation where they promise more than they could actually deliver. But also on top of that is that. Um, yeah, they have that that uh, the other issue of um, the game as it is now is just a, a bad fallout with even worse bugs. Like the fact that they're getting jumped on, like Bethesda wouldn't have copped this much flack for Fallout Four, and Fallout Four was easily buggy. So yeah, oh, yeah. <coughs> okay, I've covered this on the on the yeah. On the, 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 the fix is in. I don't know who there, who's from. There, but, there yeah. is there is an American sphere of influence and video game me because we're in Australia, I, and, yeah. and some of the stuff I don't know if you're the same, but I look at it. Australian video game media is nowhere near as, as clinically insane as US ones. Yeah. And the US do operate as a little bit of a protection racket for their industry. Yeah. And you can see how they treat Japan. I mean, no, that's the point. You think, of, you think of it from every single country that's struggling or poor, like Iran or it's all US sanctions because they, they know they're eventually going to have to buy petrol and that's US dollar. And so it's an extension of that. So. I think the video game industry is, is a similar thing. It's yeah. pre- the US one is protected. Yeah. They do target the Japanese one and, and I believe there's a lot of racism involved in a lot yeah. of reporting out of America about, Especially about Japanese, anime yeah. and, and stuff like that. Uh, there just absolutely is. They can deny it all they want but th- there is. Um, but there's also a bit of American protection yeah, going for on. Yeah, sure, for um, sure. Yeah. And, and I think the uh, City Project Red suffers from that because, yeah, they, they look, okay, Cyberpunk 2077 might have deserved to get hammered but, yeah, you're right, they're full out sort of didn't get as... Like, the the American devs get away with a lot more. Uh, uh, they, yeah. make, they make buggy shit as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I've always said the worst thing about the Bethesda deal is they kept Pete Hines and they kept Todd Howard. They needed a clean house. Like, there might be talented people there, but when there's people who can't make video games in charge of them, they're just going to make bad video games. Howard just has to go into the meme Hall of Fame. Yes. And, uh, like and he Shiggy. can be proud Like Shiggy. He can just float in and out for his award ceremony, collect his little statue... Thank you, everybody, and they just fly back at the door. They oh, need a I refuse yeah. to believe he knows how to make a video game anymore. They, there's a point where, it, yeah, yeah, it passed you by. But there should be a meme museum, yeah. right? Where they have the greatest memes of all time. Todd Howard would be in there. He you, would be an honorary... You mentioned the Wii U before we started, like on the, the Facebook stream. The, did you, have you played Star Fox Zero? Uh, no, but my son played the hell out of it, and he was okay. good at it. Okay. Are you going to complain about the controls? It was awful. How bad are the controls? Like, okay, okay. I didn't play it, but I know my son was all over it, had no problem with the controls, Yes, and did really well. But what did they add? Like, what did the controls add? Nothing. Having to aim like this it, while watching the screen added nothing. He, I watched my son play. I remember the time you were telling yeah. me, right? Now, you struggled because you were old, right? Yeah. But my son, he picked it up, and he was all over it. He had no issue. He was playing the game like a freaking expert, like he's on an easy difficulty and everyone else. I would that. argue, but again, keep in mind a lot of the Japanese Splatoon players use um, that aiming. They don't use stick. Yeah, but, he's good at Splatoon But the too, thing is, piece. the difference with Splatoon, I can turn that off and I can just use the right stick. And that was, the, that was what typified the Wii and the Wii U era. Was that they were shoehorning these motion controls and they were shoehorning all this stuff in without offering the. I want to see crap motion controls. The Sonic Sonic rings. The one thing I'll give them on this. <laughs> you have to do this. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was the same for it was the same for DK. For you're doing Donkey Kong speed run. Yeah, you this? Tropical Jungle. That's my switch. If something ever breaks in your house, you can hit it with. This yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got other things that'll do that job. Um, have you, have, did you send your, your little Joy-Cons down to Essendon Footy Club? Yeah, train, yeah, train. yeah, the James Heard edition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peptides. I was, I was 16, I was 16 <laughs> years old when I sent them, and now look at them. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like... Yeah, big Joy-Cons. Yeah. Um, I've got a normal one here. I usually have... They're Essendon coloured, too. Heard he's oh, been of these. Yeah. Because I, I had my, uh, my, uh, my NG Plus one, my, my purple one on the left side, and the silver one on this side, the silver one started drifting. They all so, do eventually. Yeah, because yeah. they're shit-ass. 
Uh, it's a bad design. But yeah, basically, the main thing I would say the difference between Nintendo between the Wii U and the Switch era is the actual choice. Like, if you don't want to... Like, if I'm playing Splatoon on this and I don't want to use, aim, like, motion control, I just turn it off. You know what I mean? And Star Fox Zero would have been an infinitely better game if I could have just turned off thing. You know you know the worst thing with these two kinds, by the way? What? That yeah. should be there. Why? Because... Because I... Dumb. Because I want to be able to play... I, Okay, this one's not so bad, but on normal, a normal, normal Wii thing, one, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like cramping my thumb down yeah. trying to do it. So that's why, really, that's why I got them. So because feel how, how they are. That's in not hand, that. Right? Look, that's not as bad. That's a bit yeah. more like an Xbox controller, yeah. as I was said. But I like the PlayStation or Wii. The PlayStation inside the Wii uh, U controller, yeah. uh, the, the Pro controller had up the top. Uh, I, I would better. say yeah, you can't do first person shooters on the Switch Joy Cons. It just feels no, like you can't because because one thumb cramps. Okay, uh, let's let's make Sony fans happy. Yeah. Well, uh, our second views, we don't have Luke back. Luke didn't like yeah. my coffee comment. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, you upset him. Okay, uh, let's let's make Sony fans happy. They're not going to like this at all. Yeah. <laughs> research firm Ace Research Institute um, has, based, you, you've seen this, has said that Nintendo effectively now has an oligopoly in Japan and that PlayStation sales have effectively been eradicated. Yes. So Sony, this is the situation of Sony, Sony in Japan. They said Switch... The, uh, or they said the Switch play style is, is well suited to the lifestyle changes after coronavirus which I would argue the Switch uh, play was already designed for it before was for yeah, Japanese for, yeah. sitting on trains yeah. all day <laughs> well, do, you remember, do you remember the old the old clamshell design of the original DS like that silver one with the like the yeah and it had like the slowly yeah so that the reason that was designed was so it could drop out of a 5 foot 3 man's pocket and hit the ground out of his collar pocket and hit the ground without breaking that was the reason oh, for really? that design. That was that was oh, one okay. of the one of the design things that Iwata put in place when he was <laughs> yep. doing it, and that's why as it went on and it became more and more uh, niche and things like that. They were breaking more hinges. They were breaking more, and like because they had the pretty skirting on the sides that yeah, matched up yeah. and stuff, and that was why you were getting a lot more breaks and stuff because that's all very rigid and, and fragile. Whereas, yeah, the original design was basically it could fall out of your pocket. Still behind yeah, the door. Interesting. Well, they, well, they look. Nintendo knew their market there, uh, but it, right now, basically, it says in Japan, Switch games uh, dominating sales charts, and Sony well, has was, gone. There was one about six months ago, and and that was when it prompted Jim Kelly to come out and say, "No, we, we still love Japan. We haven't forgotten about Japan." Blah, no, because no, they keep changing controls. Yeah. They keep uh, censoring yeah, the games. It, yeah, and, for sure. Yeah, uh, and so, um, but that was from I think it was was this Ace Research. Yeah, yeah, Ace, Ace Research. So they did one on consumer attitudes towards the PlayStation <coughs> brand, and that was what yeah. prompted it, was that they found that the, the downturn in positive thoughts towards the, the brand, or even thoughts at all, had dropped significantly, like 30-odd percent. Um, and yeah, granted, grand Microsoft's never going to make waves in there, but at the same time, if they found a way to combine their talents with the Switch, and obviously with the rumours of the, the, the new Switch, I'm sure... Is that next, next story, one? next story. Right, last yeah. story, I was going to save that for last. Yeah. Because yep. um, I figured you might know more. Yeah, as... Yeah. Well, <laughs> Uh, as in, um, and so I feel like that is potentially Microsoft's way back into Japan. Is like work with Sega or work with Nintendo or something to, to sell into Japan. Well, you, you've said, and I agree with you for a while, that Microsoft and Nintendo kind of divided the industry up yeah, between just them. Just carved out. it up. Yeah. Yeah, so with Game competing. Pass and with everything. I'm not really. competing with each other at the moment. Well, I think they've competed with each other for a long time, but it's just now it's very obvious. So, yeah. yeah. So, in Japan, PlayStation sales have been eradicated. The word they use, in quotes, eradicated. Uh, and the Switch has basically taken over in Japan. Uh, yeah. uh, well done, Sony Management. I uh, hope the yeah. Chinese money's worth it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Might, it might be, you know what I mean? But, um, it may, yeah. it, look, it may be, but I've got to say, if, you, if you're going to take that risk, it is a high risk, high reward. Yeah. There's no guarantee that the Chinese will embrace yeah. Sony and there's and I would, Japanese Yeah, and I, and I would say that, was, especially with a lot of gaming companies, you've seen it with a lot of the retro mindsets and stuff like that, is people do atta- form these attachments to the brand, so they will pay these exorbitant fees, they will pay all this stuff, yeah. because... They either believe in a company, they believe what a company's done. But the Chinese like, Chinese yeah. consumers don't have any any uh, fealty to the brand. Why would they? Because well, because game consoles were banned up until two thousand fifteen, right? So there's no there's no um, hey Alex, there's there's no um, there's no loyalty there. Yes, there, there hasn't been like with me, right? Yeah, I, I played Amiga when I was when I was going through my growing yeah. up years and Sega and that and you. you yeah, uh, you were a Sega boy, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so look, um, so you had that, but but that won't be there. No, because 2015 is still only 
six. I, I, I would argue this is the, the the flip side as well of that is that a lot of games obviously have loot boxes and stuff, and that's because people obviously like money, and there's enough of a market for it here in the West. But loot boxes in China are just viewed completely differently. Yeah, if, you, if you if you yeah. pay to win, okay, well you've, you've obviously have the money to pay to win, so God's blessed you, or you've been you, you're, you're you're a better person. Yeah. Like we, we talk about the the. The, the worship of money in the West. I mean, it's got nothing on China, you know what I mean? And so it's one of those cultural things that people don't address. But at the same time, you know, we had the eras where, you know, to get people to play multiplayer, sh- to play shooting games, they added multiplayer. When Japan went from arcade simulations to, well, the hardware, we can make these games now appear on NES, Super NES, all these kind of things, and not lose too much. How do we get people to, to play these games or pay 60 bucks for these games? They started doing long story RPGs. You know what I mean, and so that that we have that 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 growing up of this is how the industry evolved and and how our like our consuming evolved to match that. China doesn't have that. China comes in late. China comes in from Dota and League being one of their main thing. Blizzard games being one of their main uh, yeah. like things because they were one of the first ones to jump on that wagon, and so that's why Genshin Impact, as much as I think it's garbage, I get why it's a big progressive step for them because. It's a storage. It's still got all of, the, and it's 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 got a lot of um, pay to win elements and a lot of rent gacha boxes and a lot of random draws and stuff like that. But it's suddenly that with a complex story on top of it. And other games have done that to an extent, sure. But it's usually been phone RPGs, puzzles and dragons, and uh, what's a uh, one from like Gree and stuff like that. They, they, they've had that in the past on mobile. But the big thing with Genshin was that it was mobile, but it was console, but it was so. It was suddenly a reason and an incentive for people to try these consoles because suddenly it's going to look better. I'm going to be able to play it on a controller. I'm going to be able to play it on PC. And it's it's that instead of going from a story-driven RPG into a gacha, it's a gacha with a story-driven RPG attached to it. So they're kind of coming into that period of their life, where they're, of their gaming creative life, where Chinese devs are going, well, if we had a story, people would care about it more. And that's it's a weird. It's an accelerated time, time. Yeah, frame, exactly. It's, it? it's a weird yeah. inverse of what we experienced, where it went from. Arc- well, it, oh, I guess it's similar. It's yeah. arcade, where it's trying to funnel as much money as they can out of you. Yeah. Then it was how do we retain audiences because we can't. Well, people will just buy the game once and then we'll get. You know, they'll pay fifty bucks for a copy of Galaga on Game on um, Super NES. Yeah. How do we get it to stay? And then that's when you had the great genesis of. Um, well, Genesis and um, uh, Super NES RPGs. Yeah. So it's again, yeah, it, it's it, people consuming habits change depending. I think that's it's it's a it's an interesting gambit for Sony. I just I'm not convinced it'll pay off as well as I think it will. There's a lot of uh, retro consoles coming out of China. Yes. Now. I've I've never seen so many the variety yeah. and also the the ability of these handheld retro consoles coming out of China with like. 30,000 games pre installed, yeah. right? And, and they, 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 they'll have everything from the old NES and, and then. And uh, they'll, 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 they'll always, there's always been a thing like that, but it's never been quite so flagrant, quite so blatant. Like Soldier so Boy, big, yeah. Soldier Boy console was one that he was advertising that on Facebook with all these ripped games. And but, like, but yeah. there's, a, there's a legal loophole in China that lets you do yes. this. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't, they don't so, respect IP laws. But, like, but, but I've, never, I've never seen so many. Yeah. They're, they're, they're what, so they're discovering this stuff. And yeah. This is where this is where I think it's going to be tricky for Sony. Sony's coming into if you if they suddenly absorb all our old games, all, yeah. all our old everything from Nintendo, Super Nintendo up to to, to Genesis up to now now, that, now you've got uh, these handhelds that come with a couple of Dreamcast games yeah. built in, right? They're absorbing a lot of games. So if you're a Chinese game, you're in a golden age, right? Yeah. You've got you've got like generations of games in front of you. Um, so for Sony to come in and say because they do because Sony's very much you'll play them our way yeah uh, and, and which I is funny that because that, that's, that's a modern mindset PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 as revolutionary as they were being CD based consoles blah 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 um, PlayStation 1 made its name on piracy and PlayStation 2 made its name on piracy and the fact that it was a DVD player do you know what I mean so you, yeah. you, you like maybe the argument is well it's the same in China if they buy it but then they pirate it who cares ha ha I'm like well, A, they're not tooled that way anymore because you'll get them on the end user license agreement. B, they'll they'll funnel those resources off and just release them on PC or release them on some like. But they'll also pirate. Like, they'll pirate the hell out of it because yeah. it's, it's they'll, a, they'll they'll physically pirate. It's not just going to be a case of yeah. like he's he's a, a, a mod chip put into existing console, so he still had to buy the existing console. So he still had to, you know what I mean? Like yeah, but, but it, it's only the, the hardware. The hardware is going to be produced and sold. That's what I mean. Sony. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Like yeah, well, I think Sony's taking a big risk. I don't know if it'll pay off. Yeah. Yeah, the, anyway, look at. But on the other hand, you don't you don't take that risk and abandon your traditional yes. base. Yeah. Um, that's that's insane. 
Uh, let's go on to the last one I have. Mm. Uh, is, is it still a rumour? Okay, the rumour is Nintendo will be releasing a 4K Switch later this year. Yes. It'll be larger. It'll have a 7-inch screen. Current one 6.2 inches. 6.2 or yep. 6.1. It'll, yeah. So it'll be a larger screen. It'll still apparently do 720p in handheld mode. Yep. Um, but it'll do 4K docked. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not as big a deal as, as they might think. But uh, apparently mass production will start in June. So, But the thing with that, so 4K docked means that any game that was 720, 1080 on consoles, on either Xbox One or even early series, if you're running that at 1080 or 1440, uh, potentially that runs at the same resolution on the Switch. That's that's what they're talking about. So basically it's like yep. they're, they're taking a, 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 a laptop hardware, like a system on chip, putting it inside a thing and releasing it. So it's going to be like... I mean, that, I, it was like, you know, I give shit, Jack shit because he was like, they're never going to do a Switch like they're never going to do a Switch Pro. I'm like, it's the only progress path. Like, name me another progress path they have. As much as they'd like to coast on this forever... A, Nintendo don't do that. They always release a slightly better revision of the existing hardware. Do you know what I mean? So um, for the Wii, the second gen Wiis were cheaper, but they lost the GameCube capabilities. Yeah. Uh, sorry, for the Wii, yeah. And then Wii U, obviously, they had the bigger issues with Wii U than, than uh, Thing. And but the, like, the awful backward compatibility. So for, for the, DS, you had DS, and you had DS Lite, which is the, basically a full rework, better screen and stuff like that, but it didn't change the power. Um 3DS, then you had new 3DS, which was more powerful and had the extra stick. Well, yeah. yeah, had the extra... Did it have a proper stick? Yeah, it did. Uh, or did it just have the nib? Nah, the little nib. I don't yeah. remember this. Um, so they had... had the, they had the two. So they had the yeah. normal thing, the, the slidey thing, and, and the other one was like the old yeah, yeah, yeah. IBM keyboard. IBM keyboard one, yeah, the yeah. old nipple, yeah. I hate that. Um, yeah, uh, and so I mean, like, that's right, because you put the Circle Pad Pro on it and then they added the, the new 3DS on there. And then that had that kind of tier of games where it will only work on the new 3DS. And they did it with the N64. You had the expansion pack games, stuff like Perfect Dark. It's like, yeah. you can play basic multiplayer with four people with no expansion pack, but if you actually want to play Perfect Dark, a story and, and all the extra stuff and all the bots and that, you need the expansion pack. And so Nintendo had the form for this kind of stuff. So to pretend that they were never going to do that, I just I never understood why he committed so hard to that particular bit. Um, and yeah, and so I feel like it's, it's I don't know, I feel like it's going to be probably this Christmas, I would say. It's four years old now. I mean, it's been out for four years. Yeah. So it's a good time to do it. Um, they don't need to reinvent the wheel. They know that. They know that they don't have to worry about a Switch 2 for another four or five years. Um, it's a good time to reinvent it. Gives you that little extra buffer. And I have heard that there are devs, third-party devs working on um, their titles to be re-released into a new Switch ecosphere. Apparently, the ecosystem, apparently the big devs have started getting these new dev consoles. And the smaller devs get them in June is the rumour that I've heard. So, yeah. So um, it's going to happen. So I'm not surprised. I reckon it'll be September, October. I reckon it'll be... It'll probably... I, I wonder if they're going to drop the price of the of the, the current ones about 100 bucks, drop the lights by 50 Or is it more likely they'll just ditch the current one and have the light and the pro? I mean, the light... Maybe. The maybe, light, yeah. Maybe that's the answer. Yeah. I, I just worry. My only thing with it is, right, so obviously... Use my Switch as an example again, right? So the Fitment is perfect there, right? So if the, the big screen is bigger, they've got Bizzle to work with. There's plenty of, you know, there's plenty of real estate there. Like there's Bizzle. There's plenty of Bizzle. So they can always just cut into that, right? And keep that the same size. Because that's my concern. If you've got, if you've got a bigger screen, let's say, all, you might get almost let's say it's chunky to there. Yeah. How how much thing is like it would, it would overhang, which is fine. But for a form factor point of view, and Nintendo do love their form factor, um, and from a storage point of view and a safety point of view, eventually you'll click the things open. My only hope is that they release a new set of Joy Cons that are fixed, and that's why they've been silent on the Joy Cons. Yeah, ship. maybe. Yeah. Um, and that would be nice. But uh, I feel like, yeah, what they'll do is this: the unit will stay the same size, and the bezel, the screen bezel, will come out. Of it. Is it there a potential? Uh, I suppose I'll need the Joy Con for the for the docked one. But I mean, the light, they're not Joy Cons. No, they don't. And, but you can put Joy Cons onto it. So, so let's say you had it on a yeah. table like that. You could play it on the table and play with Joy Cons. But then, I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose of it. Like, the Switch yeah. Lite was 100% for either people already have one and they want to give one for the kid to go to school with or for Japanese people going to the train. You know, yeah, they're like, I don't need the big one. Um, I'm never going to play it when it's not on the train or I'm not doing Sudoku or I'm not playing some puzzle game or something like that. I'm never going to put it into a TV. Uh, like, I get the appeal. The argument is always like, you're only paying $100 less for one that can't go into a TV, so is it worth it? I mean, my answer is always yes. And... The biggest thing at the moment, if you're on the Facebook marketplaces and stuff like that, 
you can get so many Switch lights because so many people bought it for Animal Crossing and now they're all sick of Animal Crossing. So 200 bucks, you can get a Switch light easy. My daughter easy. just hit the roof if she heard that and went, how can you get sick of Animal Crossing? Um, I'm into <laughs> multiple thousands of hours. If she needs anything, let me know. Um, she, no, multiple she's on this marketplace so. now where yeah. people buy and sell things and they, yeah. they, they do the deals and they go on each other's islands. And they and do villages and stuff like that. Yep, yeah, for sure. it's, it's, she's like been... All, all might have been ruined she's because little, I... She's a little businesswoman. Yeah. Say, uh, hey, everyone's, everyone wants to fix the gender balance in, yeah. in, in boardrooms. My daughter, when she's ready to go, little business brain in that one. It um, really is. Well, yeah, like with, um, with this... I mean, to say um uh that's off stream off stream um with that so all my villages are ruined because i've given them gifts and if you give them gifts it changes their <coughs> default house yeah so all the people who want these specialty villages want the ones that haven't been gifted because then it's pristine it's exactly how the game developers intended it to be okay. uh, and then there's another problem of let's say your first three villages are one of the ones that you want to sell their houses are restricted to certain types, so it'll be dirt floors or it'll be wooden walls, like cabin style. And then anyone who comes in after your first three will have their fully elaborate uh, houses, if that makes sense. So um, I don't play so, the game. Yeah, no, no, no. So this is what I'm saying. So all those things are taken into account when you factor in a deal where it's like, I'll give you a hundred bucks for a Raymond. It's like, is he a gifted Raymond? Is he a launch? Is he a is he a okay. starting Raymond? Do you know what I mean? Like. All these things have to be factored in when you you sell these characters and items and stuff like that, and yeah, it's too much, too much hassle for me, man. Like I say to everyone, you see all these like people and they're like, oh my god, I made this little Japanese side street and it looks like Shibuya, it looks like something out of the yeah. back of Harajuku, and I'm just like, I'm gonna go check if there's some fish now. I'm gonna go check if there's... <laughs> like I've got basically once I finish the podcast, I've got Buzz on my island and he'll buy my um, he'll buy my insects for 1.5. So basically, I'm just gonna hang up. But once we finish the thing. Play with the, like play with the end of the podcast, and then I'm just going to go bug netting the whole time because Buzz will sell me 1.5. So, um, you know, that's that's what I'll do. You know, I, I just play the game because I play the game. But it is interesting to see people who are creatively minded and what they're doing with it, and they're doing way more than I ever did. So, yeah, I've seen some pretty cool stuff on it, and uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, my daughter is hooked on it, and she she's got a very nice little island house. So she she runs around as a little Japanese character in it. And yeah. She, and well, she, I think she I, wants to live in Japan. I think that's actually. I'm, I'm at the moment. I'm at the moment wearing um, the ceremonial kimono, and so I got it given to me. So that's why I'm running around with little um, the nori clogs as well, like clock, 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 clock. They're all running around the thing. Um, oh, but, they're the ones the uh, final boss in Dead or Alive. Yes, for. the Tengu ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Wow, I mean that's yep, that's true. That's yeah. Actually, you you, you play some video games. Wow, hey, <laughs> wow, you got to a final that's, boss. I'm impressed. Back when I was fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah well, no, it, it, just, just adopt the virtual kid style. Yeah. One, one two, one two. Uh, one, virtual kids the best game. I don't, so I still know what Couch Warriors won't even respond to my messages anymore. Yeah, yeah. They've got to add virtual fighter kids to the roster. Oh man, not a crap like tech, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> crap like tech. Good way to get on so many CW kids. Uh, yeah, crap like of tech. kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah like honestly, I, I feel like um, that that it, the, the the switch it's a natural progression. Uh, I feel like more and more. I think COVID really did put the hamper on a lot of things because suddenly Nintendo did their first direct in a year and a half, and they announced a bunch of games and a bunch of dates on games and stuff like that. And like Sony's direct, they did, and they announced. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I feel, yeah, that was the worst. That was so bad. Like people, they're lost. Yeah, they are lost. Oh, I, they, I, they bought out the PlayStation Five because they didn't want to let my, Microsoft have ah. I see, Seppy yeah, knows yeah. virtual fighter kids, but they they bought out um, the PlayStation Five because they didn't want Microsoft to release a yeah. console because they're stuck in their console generation mindset, yeah, which is yeah. outdated because the Xbox is not a generation; it's an upgrade. Yeah. It's like buying a new graphics card. They are, they rushed it out, and you can see it. They rushed it out by some yeah. of the reports you get of it. Well, they, they still can't get the memory is, controller to work. And remember, I flagged that when we first when they first yeah, showed yeah, what it was. They, they, so the, the main feature they couldn't get going. Um, they are lost. They are a lost company. They made yeah. a lot. They made a lot of money last year, but they're lost. Well, you you got to remember, at least in the early days of Sony. And again, with another shit on Sony podcast. What a surprise from us too. But like. Um, I'm surprised in the early days threats. they were a tech company. <laughs> Where's so, our threats, guys? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, so like Kudaragi, um, yeah, emotion engine bullshit. Yeah, it was bullshit. But he's he's a tech guy. Kudaragi now works for a robot, like an AI and robotics company, making robots that interact with people. And that's where Kudaragi always wanted to be. And so when he left the company, it stopped being that. It started being the marketing and movie company that it is, right? And so for many years, it was the gaming side that was carrying all the resources of the thing. It was insurance and gaming were the two most profitable parts of the Sony Enterprise. Everything else went downhill because instead of, um, like, 
they, they, they invented a lot of technology. Give, give Sony credit where it's due. They just backed a lot of bad horses. They backed Betamax because that was their format. And the problem with Betamax is that while the video quality was better and all that was yeah, better. Yeah, they picked every format since then, though. It went, yeah, <laughs> so, it went, it went yeah. one hour and so you couldn't do that. Mini disc, brilliant technology for the time, mm-hmm. but it was it was outdated like very soon after with MP3. They kind right. of adapted that to the PSP. Correct. Discs. Yep. yep. Um, but then they got greedy. So Sony memory cards. But also, in fairness, in mini disc, there was also a digital compact cassette, which I think yes. was the Philips thing. Neither actually found a place. Yes. Because the CD was coming. Yeah. So yeah. and so and so that that is those things where Sony used to be a great consumer technology company. I but, remember. You, but consumer technology has become this. Everything is a monolith. How much can we fit in the monolith? Like, okay, do you want a, do you want an old school story and then we'll we'll wrap it well, up? If right? you were rich when I was young, you had a Trinitron. See, like that was the thing. and and even now, if you just said to someone, "I've got one of the what is it, the W one hundred one something like that model flat screen uh, CRTs, the ones that take HDMI, they're seven twenty. That's how big they are. There were so many de- like things in the diet you could you could use HDMI on it. Mm. They're huge. They're like monstrous. They're giant CRTs, but it's just got that refresh rate is non-existent because it's literally half a millisecond yeah. as it, uh, half a microsecond I don't know what they'd call it as it flicks the eye on into the front of the screen right so it's nothing compared to delay on this and so there's still that that that, that appeal it's less now that the, the Melee kids have moved on to the adapters that do uh, HDMI but still look when I first got my first iPhone that was an iPhone 4 so that's how long ago we're talking about back in grandpa's day right the only reason I got an iPhone we're up to near 12 I had I had I had a um a Mac at the time. I had a Mac running uh, like OS X three, right? Um, and so that's a uh, ten point three. So that's how long ago we were talking, right? So it was a very long time ago. The only phone that would work with Mac was Apple. But I was so hell bent on getting. Do you remember the Walkman phones? Like the Sony Sony phones used to be awesome. Mm. They used to be great. As a and I had a PlayStation One phone for a while. I played PlayStation One games. Yeah, and I mean yeah. like. I remember the W101 phones, uh, W101, the W5550 phones and stuff like that. Um, the flip phones. Oh, you know, I've always loved my flip phones. I've still yeah, got my one that I take to Japan. I use it exclusively in Japan. Um, and so Microsoft is coming out with one scene. Uh, is that a thing, is it? Well, it's supposed to come out last year, but obviously nothing happened last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Did last year happen? Or did we, we all like... We'd, Windows, Windows Mobile 11. Did we all um, not off it, like, yeah. you know, march and just wake up? But I feel, <laughs> I, I feel like, if anything, this, this is the kind of cynical world we live in now. Is that yeah. everything's a monolith? Everything's this because a lot of innovation is driven, and a lot of chipsets are made in and driven out of China. And so, like stealing an idea, quote unquote, isn't a concept for them. It's like that's a good idea. We should just do that. Why didn't we do that? Whereas, like over here, over here, America especially, IP is such a protected right. Like, how dare you infringe upon their IP rights? So much so that we're going to negotiate it back into the trade Pacific, the Trans Pacific Partnership. Blah 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 blah. blah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, I wonder when Biden's going to. Yeah, 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 it's coming. Don't worry. Um, well, I figured that was why he had so much tech company support. I, yeah. I figured that was the deal that they. Done. Yeah, that was the, the, the trade off. Yeah, but look, that, that, that's my that's my thing with it is I think Sony is no longer a tech company and they haven't been for a long time and this is the death knell of that. So whether you liked that or whether you didn't like that, like you, you can argue what you want about the PS3. It had its problems and it had definitely things that it could have done better. But that was all on the service side. The actual processes and stuff like that for its era were. Fantastically powerful for a console, it just didn't matter because no one was going to de- develop for it. So, we, you know, that was one that Bobby Kotick called 15 years ago, and he said, I want to get to the point where it's a unified platform. And if, if anyone's gotten close to that point, it's Activision. I, I'm on I'm on Call of Duty, I'll be playing with Luke, who's on Xbox, I'll play with Cart, who's on PC, yeah. I'll play with Clony, who's on PC. If someone was on PlayStation, they could jump on with us as well, and it just uses their chat client, and off we go. Bob's your uncle. You know what I mean? Like, if anyone's really gone for that platform agnostic base, it's them. Did you know, I'll tell you a Bobby Cotting story. Did you know at one point he wanted to buy the Amiga of Commodore yeah. and make it into a game console? I've heard that many moons ago, but yep. yeah. Yeah, you say, uh, which, which um, Commodore kind of did with the CD32 yes, late. Yes, CD32, and the, yeah. And the design was awful. But um, yeah, no, that would have been very interesting if someone like him, because as much as he's an evil prick, he knows what he's doing well that, that was that era as well that was, MS, to see. that was MSX and that was that kind of era where you could get away with that kind of hardware do you know what I mean so uh, it'll be interesting uh, look I don't know I, I feel like an Amiga game console would have been yeah nice yeah. especially back when it was really on top yeah 
Well, I mean, because oh. it, it had the power advantage back in those days. It was, it was easy to code for. So I knew people use them for video stuff. editing and stuff even in those days. Yeah, you know well, they're making, fa- I think it's Babylon 5, famously, yep. they made on, on the Amiga. But they're re-releasing that soon, so I wonder if they're going to upgrade the Upgrade it, yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was running off a laptop. <laughs> no, making a remake, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's... Um, there we go for time. Let's so pack it in. No, 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 because we're, we're, we're 12 minutes plus 44 minutes, so that's 55 minutes, so let's pack it in. Yeah, let's go. We'll keep it under an hour. I didn't think I'd have much. When I started to write all this down, but here we are. And yeah, uh, I always carried on. Um, there was one thing I wanted to mention about Twitch because really about anything else. Ads and stuff. I mentioned that they pulled the anti union ads. Um, oh, yeah. Um, and we mentioned the terms of service. No, I covered everything I wanted to, to cover. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I just find it interesting that, yeah, Twitch, um, Twitch is in that weird spot where it's got autonomy and it's obviously getting pushed from Amazon to change now that Mixer is dead. But I still feel like there's just enough push for them to know when to say. No, we, we messed up. Like, they're, they're pretty quick at retracting stuff when they mess up. Yeah. People like to pile on them, but I'm just like, yeah, YouTube, Look, YouTube wouldn't have cared. YouTube wouldn't have cared. Look, some some idiot politicians might be screaming about mob justice right yeah. now. And, and, and yes, there is a, you could say that to a degree the mob justice is bad. But on the other hand, if there's mob, if there's a, an act, public outcry about something, if it's natural and yeah. not astroturfed, it's worth listening to, and it is nat- this one. That's the thing. A lot of it is natural, yeah. and, and the, f- the the backlash from Twitch would have been pretty natural too, and they would have been sensitive to it just based on all the things that have happened on Twitch. And in the last sometimes, year or so. and sometimes when the public does see something and react to it, you got to listen because yeah. they're right. Um, and, but too often, too often we got to a point where oh, it's just uh, people online get upset about things. Yeah, look, that happens. But you know, this is why you know the old saying: "Customers always right." That's yeah. not literal, yeah. but it does mean you have to have listen. And pick the bits the, the, out. The, 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 the customer's always right comes from again, and then we'll wrap. Yeah. It's not the, the random person in front of me yelling at me demanding the, ca- the Karen. The Karen's yeah. not it, right? Is, is if yeah. I sell product A and I sell product B, and as much as I love product B and I really want to push product B, but I'm selling seventy percent of product A, the customer is always right. I order in more more product, or A. I work out what out of A they're buying. Yeah, exactly, and, and, then, and this is where companies don't get it. And so sometimes when when the zeitgeist gets yeah. gets animated about something, you you. It, if you are if you are a smart business person or a smart person, it, yeah. you find out what it is there at the core of that, yeah. and you address it. Yeah. And too too often now, everybody will either jump to do to take a literal what the what the people the mob yeah. are saying, or they'll turn around and say, "Oh, the mob are just man babies or, or idiots or mob or you know," and then they'll dismiss them. You've you've got to look at it and say, "What is what is the core here? What's going is, on?" Is there something here that's actually relevant yeah. to what's being discussed? And our Twitch did that with the union ads. Yeah. Um, uh, remember the Sonic movie they did with the Sonic movie yeah. It, it, but yeah that's what you do anyway we're probably done newgameplus.tv is there anything coming out uh, Cash Warriors uh, League returns hopefully in two weeks time um, mm-hmm. so do keep your eyes on the Cash Warriors League channel do I forget the website all sort of for again soon enough yeah and, and, and I we should be back on TV the end of March or start of April time. I reckon at this point based on current pipelines mm-hmm. um, and so that'd be good for is there going to be a ban this year can't really say anything at the moment Okay. There'll cool. be a, there'll be something, but whether it's BAM or not is the question. Okay. Cool. Um, and so, um, and then the other stuff is is all going to slowly come trickling out over the next few days and weeks on the Facebook page. So keep an eye out. Yeah. So um, go to Facebook, uh, New Game Plus TV, one word. Yeah. Uh, YouTube, New Game Plus TV, one yeah. word. If you're interested in streaming, saying, yeah. go check out Prospects. You've got two videos there about streaming, how to set up. Third one's coming setup. in about Third two ones. weeks. Yeah. Go check it out. Uh, Prospect does all the uh, what Tech, say, he's tech a technical stuff director for New Game Plus. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about in that area. So go check it out. New Game Plus TV on YouTube. New Game Plus TV on Twitter. Man, how do you want to go there? But what the Twitter's, Twitter's a hellhole. Yeah. Um, so Facebook, New Game Plus TV. Uh, website, New Game Plus TV. Anything I missed? I think that's everything. Cool. Thank you, anybody who was watching. Uh, Graham, Andrew, Alex, uh, Luke earlier. Yeah, there was a few others. Yeah, there was a um, thanks, thanks, everybody. Uh, and we'll have the podcast up on Spotify very soon as well. Yep. And, uh, and I might even move out the website soon. Uh, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's chat about that at some point too. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Thank okay. you, everybody. See ya. Bye.